సార్ 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 వెల్కమ్ సార్ నమస్తే సార్ పవన్ సార్ పవన్ ద్వారకానాథ్ రెడ్డి సార్ ఇస్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ ఎలెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఐఎంఏ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ ప్లీజ్ ద్వారకానాథ్ రెడ్డి సార్ ఓకే సార్ ద్వారకానాథ్ రెడ్డి సార్ గదయ్య సార్ వెల్కమ్ సార్ ద్వారకానాథ్ రెడ్డి సార్ వెల్కమ్ సార్ sir shall we start sir yes yes please start yes sir good evening and uh, i welcome you all to this uh, fifth webinar of the monthly series and uh, on the occasion of autism awareness day today we are uh, having this program now i invite uh, our president dr v george reddy sir sir thank you pavan sir now i invite uh, dr minaz nasirabadi sir president elect of ips telangana state branch thank you pawan sir welcome sir now i invite uh, our past president and awards committee chairman and uh, ch uh, chairperson of the today's uh, program dr ram subaredi sir sir please wel uh, sir welcome sir i thank invite uh, our treasurer uh, dr narayan rao kambam party good evening sir sir welcome sir i also invite uh, our teacher madam gauri devi madam to this panel madam on the occasion of autism awareness day madam welcome madam thank you thank you now i hand over the proceedings to uh, now i welcome the speaker of the day uh, dr rishikesh giriprasad vanchala thank you sir uh, sorry rishi uh, welcome and now i hand over the proceedings to president sir sir jaw sir please take over sir yeah, yeah. thank you pawan uh, anil i am on the screen yes sir you are yes sir yeah uh, respected uh, senior colleagues of the indian psychiatric society telangana state branch and uh, uh, dear and junior colleagues uh, psychiatrists and uh, other members who are a part of the team of autism in dealing with autism the multidisciplinary concept of autism i think uh, we have uh it, it's a, it's a mix i'm so happy to see uh, my uh, senior colleagues uh, from uh, the national institute for the mentally handicapped now it's uh, called as the national institute for the empowerment of the person with intellectual disability i could see dr jayanti narayan uh, i could see uh, other members there but uh, just before we start about autism uh, i take the privilege uh, to recall my um days back to 2006 i think i i just finished my post graduation and my last posting was uh, at uh, nilafer and my last teacher was dr usha nayak i think definitely uh, i would start this uh, uh, program to take her name first uh, uh, because teacher uh, dr usha nayak was my last formal teacher and i think uh, she taught me about uh, the basics of autism i think the luck was uh, our my destiny was uh, just i finished my post graduation on the 4th of march 2006 and 2005 i had my uh, guest faculty position at nimh so i think uh, that that was my the first day uh, when i entered nimh uh, it was totally a different world for me because uh, we uh, being psychiatrists we only see our op and it's a total different kind of environment there and uh, initially uh, uh, to treat autism was really it was a tough job for me so i, I used to keep on referring uh, uh, the children back to dr vishanai and i think uh, a month or two uh, dr vishanai called me up and uh, uh, dr usha madam also was there dr. niranjan sir was there i think uh, then vishanai would have said what boss you have done your degree and post graduation you are referring the cases by what are you doing and i think that's that was the time when i took it as a challenge uh, to start to deal with these children uh, with autism though nmh deals with uh, children with intellectual disability we have whole lot of uh, children there and i think that's um, my first uh, institute uh, nmh just given me everything what i am today i owe a lot to nmh and uh, definitely 
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಯಂತಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶೈಲಜಾ ರೆಡ್ಡಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೈರಿ ಡಿ ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸರೋಜ್ ಆರ್ಯ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೈಕಾಲಜಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬೀನಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಗೇನ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನವೀನ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ದೆನ್ ಸಮಯಗಾರ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಸಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಶೋ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಸೈಕ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಸಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಶೋರ್ nobody needs to be called the boss and nobody needs to know that they can uh, do everything with autism i think nmh gave me that strength and exposure to meet uh, so many stalwarts uh, in the field of uh, special education uh, rehabilitation psychology you call it a speech therapy uh, occupational therapy and my uh, own um, senior dr om prakash uh, om sai ramesh sir was there i think i joined in his place uh, for about 3 years um then uh, it was it was a whole different kind of an approach and i think that was uh, it was that made me get inclined to child psychiatry and many times people call me as a child psychiatrist but we, my inclination was uh, that much that uh, i preferred uh, to look at uh, autism children uh, in in as with a special interest today being the world uh, autism awareness day uh we are we have uh, uh, put forward this webinar and uh, before i talk i i just want to uh, highlight to all the youngsters here particularly psychiatrists uh, and the post graduates uh, nmh runs a, a course called as pg diploma in early intervention because again see looking at autism and all that the concept of early intervention is something which is the most important according to me because you try to know that the child has a future risk of going into the spectrum of asd i think trying to intervene at that early phase i think it gives a great uh, uh, sense of improvement in the child and particularly knowing about the early signs i and having the courage uh, to diagnose and uh refer appropriately deal appropriately in the multidisciplinary approach i think it will it will really help these children and uh, it runs a course nmh runs a course and uh, even psychiatrists can take up that uh, pg diploma course and particularly who uh, who are interested in child psychiatry uh, please explore and uh, if you show interest i think you have a bright future here and uh, friends like puja jha rageesh nayar still I, in the private practice i am i am well connected to all these people because i believe psych, uh, autism is a multidisciplinary approach we have everybody's role uh, already uh, uh, assigned all we need to do is we need to really work as a group so that these children with autism can really improve uh, without taking much time and i think uh, i i will uh, introduce today's uh, chairperson uh, dr ram subareddy sir to our uh, psychiatric uh, fraternity he needs no introduction uh, dr ram subareddy sir is the immediate past president of the indian psychiatric society telangana state branch i took over from sir sir did his mbbs from karnool uh, medical college and uh, later he did his uh, masters uh, uh, md in psychiatry from the institute of mental health terakata uh with his uh, guru dr uh, um, raghuram reddy sir and later he worked as assistant professor at karnool medical college and later again i think sir moved back to uh, hyderabad and he worked at uh, gandhi as the head of the department and currently sir is uh, doing the wonderful job and encouraging so many youngsters uh, to take up child psychiatry and uh, the uh, nilofer is doing a, a wonderful job and uh, he is currently heading the department of psychiatry at nilofer and uh, a very cordial senior uh, a, a loving teacher and uh, under his guidance we have today's speaker uh, dr uh, rishikesh and again the, dr rishikesh uh, needs no introduction to our members but uh, i request uh, uh, dr ram subareddy sir please take over the uh, proceedings sir uh thank you george reddy good evening to all the psb members
so on the occasion of the world autism day am i audible yes sir yes sir okay. yeah yeah so telangana state bank selected today's topic autism 360 degrees approach this is to create awareness and to improve the quality of life in autistic children basically autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder with estimated prevalence of 1 to 2% in the population in the recent years op numbers are gradually increasing due to awareness among parents as well as the present new parents as well as the present nuclear family structure along with the working culture among the parents we can recognize the autistic features as early as one year of child's age and within 3 years of age we can diagnose majority of autistic children so here the outcome will be good if there are no comorbidities and early recognition of the condition so basically in uh, recently in nilofar hospital the central government started a early intervention center we are having the speech therapists and all the other faculties in the early intervention center so we are getting the good uh, results even with the multi with the multidisciplinary approach and uh, today's speaker dr rishikesh is both pediatrician and psychiatrist therefore he can cover both the developmental aspects and uh, autistic features of the children and uh, he's also good at administering the scales so he can cover the topic in detail and at the same time i am uh, suggesting that uh, rishikesh to present a lucid way and uh, with this a little bit slow yes. thank you rishikesh okay, with this sir. brief introduction now i invite dr rishikesh to proceed with his presentation sir thank sir, for uh, rishikesh uh, sir sorry for the interruption sir. i think i, I was uh, discussing with dr rishikesh uh, rishi what how should we title the presentation i think uh, rishi gave me the freedom uh, sir i think uh, it's your call sir uh, i know rishi because uh, he is doing a lot of work uh, with children with autism then i i just told rishi why can't we call it a 360 degree uh, approach uh, because uh, rishi is not only doing a psychiatrist role and he encourages uh, uh the role of uh, all the multidisciplinary team and he has he has been into uh, so many seminars so many workshops and i think uh, his uh, behavior modification uh, techniques he uses and he gives definitely the parents a package of uh, the uh, concept so i thought this will be the right person to talk about uh, autism in in a full multidisciplinary approach this uh, with that words uh, it's over to you thank you for the great introduction sir this this introduction uh, made me nervous sir because i was prepared but uh, being uh, saying so many uh, good words and saying so much talk about me made me much nervous now so i should be more prepared to present and ram sir sir i'll try to be slow whenever i'm fast please correct me sir i'll definitely slow down so as george reddy sir said uh, uh, autism 360 is basically we usually look at the uh, only picture of clinical science and we try to refer it to a therapist and we always de- uh, depend on therapist and ask them what to do and in what i see is uh, in hyderabad or in telangana therapists are, are more uh, getting more cases than psychiatrists probably because they don't want to use medication or the stigma or we don't have the knowledge of what therapies have to be done how they have to be progressed how do we assess the child how do we want to see that's why this whole scenario is 360 basically i'm only presenting clinical point of view for practitioners and uh, i'd like to uh, discuss about the scales and i'd like to tell you about how to do a occupational therapy small hints how to help the child because i work in a government setup luxury of therapies are not there at us we have minimum occupational therapist available at our place but he needs also inputs day and day out uh, looking at how the child is improving so basically for children rishi sorry sorry for interrupting i think the the, the group uh, we have lot of uh, uh, special educators there are we have psychologists now who are attending there are uh, occupational therapists there are uh, speech therapists i think there are many in the audience also yes sir i think at the end we can take their inputs also yes, yes sir sure sir so uh, mostly uh, what i always feel is there should be one primary person for uh, assessing and everything and he should be guiding everyone around and there should be intercommunication between the departments of uh, the psychiatrist Uh, the occupational therapist the speech therapist the behavior therapist who are is doing the therapies and input should be taken from the both sides and should be communal it should be a congenial one mm-hmm. for both the people to uh, uh, to discuss what exactly is wrong with the child because every autistic child is pretty different from another child 
very few child most of the uh, parents what i have seen is they take input from the parents they take input from other children other parents who have child has improved but that may not work for this child so this has to be very clear that's why interdisciplinary approach is very 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 important as george redd said coming to uh, slides coming to my chapter so the theme is transforming the narratives contribution at home at work in the arts and in policy making this is the theme of 2023 world autism day which is celebrated on 2nd april the basic uh, thing is making the child uh, adjusted at home as well as in society and also making policies for the survival of the child in the society the theme says this this is your theme is this so what is autism 360 basically i want to discuss about basic clinical features diagnosis assessment treatment and multidisciplinary approach so it covers almost all the things i wanted to include prevention also recently i have come across an article how to prevent autism also but i don't know whether it was suitable article or not that's why i'll put little lines on uh, uh, at the end i'll probably tell you few points about prevention i don't want to put it on a slide because it was not actually I have major studies about prevention there's only one paper which has given it so what usually parents say parents say about com commonly comes up complaint with speech delays i have seen most of the parents come saying that my child is not speaking or they say that my child has spoken at one one out of year age and gradually the speech has been lost there are usually two complaints which they come with and those speech is there uh, in some children there may be speech like they'll be saying alphabets rhymes and all those things but they can't communicate saying mummy daddy or they can't call for uh, any help with verbal communication and poor eye contact where the child can uh, does not make eye contact continuously these uh, eye contact continues most of the parents when asked their questions they say that my child is making an interrogation but if you go into deep details how much time you are talking depending upon the age of the child development of the child you have to have certain amount of eye contact by after 9 months of age usually continuously the child will make an eye contact to you unless there is no disturbance other side so this is usually uh, happens but parents have to understand that and uh, as as a doctors we also have to, have to understand that eye contact is continuous maintenance of eye contact when and whenever we are trying to communicate with the child whenever we are trying to play with the child and not responding to them is the most common complaint and this also one uh, decisive question which is there the parents say that my child is responding to my name this happens mostly with one pa one family member in the house the child may be very attached to the prayer one mo mother or a father when they, the the person the uh, the child attached to one person calls his name he responds very immediately but when the other person calls in the home or the people a neighbors call him he does not respond so here we have to remember one particular point that basically autism is a social communication deficit so corresponding just to the mother or one person will not be a prominent symptom uh, prominent uh, 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 responsibility the child should respond to name for every every person around the house and who knows him so this is uh, one more thing they present with not sitting at one place and most of the kids around 4 5 years of age if they come if you don't uh, go into the deeper history most of the cases are diagnosed as adhd at this age because the most common complaint is adhd if the parents pick, could not pick up the points of early signs of autism not following commands is another person where usually children will get when they when they have some needs usually they get whatever uh, is available if they want a water bottle if it is dear to them it reachable to them they go and get it or they take, take the parent there and ask the put the parents hand on the bottle to let it give them it doesn't point out it doesn't gesture he just gets it or ask the parents to give it to him so in this case there is no following of commands when we ask the child to do something get something he usually does not do it or he does it very occasionally not playing with other children and this is also one decisive question one tricky thing where parents usually say that my child is playing with uh, 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 other children then i ask them the question that whether your child is having interactive play whether they are playing interactively around 2 to 3 years of age the children starts interactive play where they should be seeing the child other child playing and they should have an interaction change of exchange of toys and they should play imaginatively also which is lacking in autism these children with autism usually run around the children or hold them hug them or push them or look at them and come at side and play along whatever they have with they try to imitate or may not imitate but they play alone most of the times and the children of this autism are most commonly cranky and stubborn these uh, these symptoms uh, cranky of stubborn symptoms uh, usually increase as the age progresses and stubbornness will increase as age progresses not treated well all these complaints are usually primary complaints and these complaints change with age you have to one keep it keep in mind always that at what age your child uh, you are you are looking at the child if the child is around 2 between 2 years and 3 years the speech is very uh, speech is delayed and not responding to name will be coming there but when you are seeing little older, older child there will be a uh, little amount of speech 
and uh, uh, name response will be pre present, but, uh, uh, but maybe to lesser extent. And imaginative per play will be there, but amount of communication expected for the for that age will not be there. So you have to always assess the mental age of the child, then look at the uh, prominent points which are available so that you can see whether the child is communicative as per the age or not, whether it is verbal communication or non-verbal communication. So basically in diagnosis, it's a comprehensive evaluation uh, uh, should be done. Definitive diagnosis of ASD must, must, must should be established because once you are labeling the child with autistic spectrum disorder, uh, uh, in Western countries, once they label it, it is a lifelong problem. So the child will get an aid from the government and it will be uh, continuously, there will be some social worker who will be helping him towards the own, or towards whole life. But in India, it doesn't work like that. So before labeling the child or saying that the child is autism spectrum disorder, you should have proper diagnosis, proper assessment with uh, uh, um, with using your history properly and the criteria or your scales, whatever, whatever is available. So definite diagnosis is pretty important. It will also help you to bring up the confidence in parents as well as yourself and also helps you to understand how the child is behaving. And exclusion of conditions that may produce similar service to symptoms. There may be intellectual disability, which have few symptoms of autism. There may be land of Kepler syndrome, which is another condition which usually resembles uh, uh, autism. So we have to exclude any other conditions which can mimic autism. Identification of comorbid conditions, which is pretty important in autism because this implies the more the comorbid conditions, the difficult the patient, the child has to be treated. If there is intellectual disability associated with autism, then it will be very difficult to, to treat the child. If there is uh, ADHD along with uh, autism spectrum disorder, again, there will be one more challenging thing where you have to treat ADHD and also a, uh, autism spectrum disorder. So that is pretty important. This also helps in genetic counseling of the children for the, if they're planning for the next children. Uh, most of the parents come and say that the first child is autistic. What are the chances of my next child getting, getting autism? So if you find any syndromic features or comorbid conditions, then probably helping him in genetic counseling will help you uh, to understand a parent that whether next child will be, what are the chance of uh, next child being autistic? And determine child level of functioning and profile of strengths and weaknesses. I usually do this. I usually focus on child strengths and weaknesses. I usually assess where the child is uh, uh, very, uh, um, which activities the child is very active and which are the activities which are the child is not doing properly. So focusing on strengths and weaknesses is very important to plan your therapies, how to go about the child's therapies. So initially when the, uh, uh, I'll commit, uh, I'll probably explain this in later slides. So history wise, developmental history, uh, we, we have to take, uh, we have to uh, have a particular attention to the developmental history from since childhood. I usually ask from perinatal history, if required from three generations of family history, pedigree chart of three generations to fathers, grandfathers, and then brothers and relatives, there may be a family history of any psychiatric disorder. There may be a family history of any uh, uh, any conditions like neurodevelopment disorder, like intellectual disability or ADHD or autism spectrum disorder, which visually miss and labeled as mental retardation, or there may be any any case of suicide. History of suicide in family members also could be a, a genetically relatable to cause of uh, can be genetically relatable to cause of autism. So developmental history is pretty pretty important. Next thing, as you have to assess both motor milestones, fine, fine motor, gross motor social and language milestones. So he, he, most of the case of uh, autism with, uh, uh, with no intellectual disability, most of them will have, uh, will not have more, uh, will not have gross motor delay or fine motor delay. Fine motor may be, delay may be secondary to hypotonia, but is not directly related to the intellectual disability. It may be uh, because of hypotonia, which is seen in usually children with autism. And uh, they present with social and speech delays most commonly. The delay is most commonly seen in uh, so, uh, speech and social communications. And if you if you uh, uh, if you quote uh, two scales like development screening tendons and uh, VSMS, which usually applied at NMS, and I also do it. VSMS is Vinland Social Maturity Scale, and development uh, uh, screening test is the ability of the child for that age. So DQ will be given by DST. Social maturity will be given by VSMS. When you do these uh, two scales, if social maturity is much behind uh, uh, developmental screening test probably you can suspect autism. The early sense of autism may be present. So early social and emotional language milestones are pretty important. The play skills of the child, whether the child is having imaginative play or is mingling with others or he's calling his parents while playing or is showing something that he has achieved. If child is did something, usually children will call and show the parents that have achieved this. And behavioral points, whatever there he, either there is harming to others, self-harm is there, breaking things, throwing things at them, throwing things or throwing temper tantrums, all should be assessed. Any regression. This is the uh, this 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 usually occurs most of the cases 
uh, uh, who are developed speech by one year uh, at that age they say ma dada or monosyllables or bisyllables with by saying by and making an eye contact this gradually regresses by 15 months to 18 months and clear cutly uh, visible by 2 to 1 of years of age where child have classical symptoms of autism spectrum disorder and these regression can be because of many many reasons what i have noticed i'm trying to assess still i'm trying to make a table of what are the reasons there may be sudden sickness uh, in the child or there may be a seizure or there may be immigration so immigration is considered to be the one of the major factor if you see go to rutters uh, if you read that 25% of children are at risk when there is an immigration so if a child is traveling to one language speaking to other language speaking state or one country to other country at this development period there are higher chance of child developing autism so out of 100 kids traveling to us or uk there may be 25 20% of kids they have they may be having regression so most of the kids uh, if if, any, if the practitioners can see that most of the parents are coming from uh, uh, america uh, foreign countries to get a treatment here and that basically because of the immigration previously they used to say that Uh, language is not important the thing uh, the child is having uh, uh, is parents are speaking some other language and child is speaking some other language it is not important barrier but few studies say that there may be a barrier between those two in these cases the regression may be happen as i told you family is also pretty important and especially the family environment because child needs lot of support from the family the parents the father the mother if the grandparents are their grandparents because involving the parents in the therapy is pretty important point in in improving autism most of the parents just do therapies and come back and uh, take the child to the school and take the child to the park but they don't do actively involved doing therapies because child will not cooperate with them that particular because not they are not trained therapists so family is pretty important to continue the therapies at home also so that there are higher chance of child to improve so the core clinical features of social emotional reciprocity where the child will not respond will not have emotional reciprocity when father comes home will not go and uh, hug him or say hi hi or bye and ask put his hands to lift him most of the children run and hold their legs or most of the run uh, run to the door and they stand it there until the father lifts him but it they doesn't give hands and they don't understand the emotions of the uh, family members around they may be uh, crying when you shout at them that 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 is basically because of the sound what you have evaluated but they don't understand the reason why you have shouted at them so there more there won't be any uh, uh, kind of understanding why the parents have scolded me or somebody has scolded me so there will be lack of social and emotional reciprocity in this and lack of communication both non verbal and verbal communication coming to non verbal communication gesturing will develop at very early age by 9 months to 1 year by pointing out waving all his till be present at by 9 months in 6 months of his they show full hand by 9 months they point out with finger pincer gas will develop at that at that point and pointing out will develop by 9 months but this will not be achieved in kids with autism they don't have gesturing for water or food whatever they have they usually show different signs rather than having the regular signs which usually uh, parents ask them to show and uh, 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 gesturing pointing out will not be present if present also they are present very occasionally and in verbal communication speech is very tricky thing in autism i usually say that in autism speech is a part of problem it is not the main problem so most of the kids may have speech in the form of saying rhymes they are verbalized saying rhymes and alphabets but they don't communicate so they say a b c d uh, whenever they see some boards or whenever there are alphabets around but you when you ask them to uh, recite they don't recite most of the time they don't tell it back that is what communication is all about and most of the children may not have speech at all if uh, if have speech also very few words and they they respond very occasionally and lack of pretend play which is usually commonly seen uh, where the child has to have a imaginative play like if there is a uh, cooking set the child has to cook and serve it to the parents or a doctor kit is there which the child has uh, has to serve uh, uh, being a doctor and treat child, treating father as a patient and usually imitate like that uh, in when when it comes to the parents when i ask them this question whether your child has pretend play they say, they say that my child usually does puzzles well and uh, they usually have blocks they does blocks very well so if the, then the next question will be if he do is does repeatedly or not if he does repeatedly how much time he takes and if he if he uses extra blocks to build another tower or if he uses any imaginative to, to to make it different shapes they say no that's how the pretend play is this basically if there are legos child tries to dif- do different experiments and different shapes but in case of autism the child will be building a three tower block 
breaking it again start building a three tower block and he's so obsessed with doing that he can do whole day with it so this is not a predatory play probably a repetitive play and comes to repetitive restrictive behaviors where it starts from daily routines to activities what they do daily routines they can be fixed to daily routines like they want to eat that in particular plate particular color of food particular kind of dressing particular color of uh, uh, toothbrush what they use they have significant uh, uh, restrictive activities what they have restrictive uh, eating of food will be there restrictive activities will be there repetitive play will be there and this repetitive plays can be motor or uh, verbal vocal stereotypes motor stereotypes like uh, rocking jumping rotating running around without any aim or flapping their hands and looking at fingers repeatedly these are all motor stereotypes and vocal stereotypes like if they know uh, if they are verbalized they usually keep on saying alphabets and roam around if they are not verbalized they use some jargon words and run around there may be both ver verbal stereotypes and vocal stereotypes which are restrictive uh, pattern of behaviors will be there and also repetitive pattern will be there it is continuously in normal children also these will be present but to a lesser extent will not be present throughout the day these children have most of the hours in a day and most of the days in a week most of the ones in a day so these are the core deficits usually seen in uh, autism and sensory problems this is this is the most common things most of the kids of with autism will have and this is the one culprit where the child is not process able to process the sensory uh, stimuli which is passed to the child uh, that's why uh, they may be hypo response or hyper response to sensory stimuli which they are uh, which which they are uh, exposed to causing different sensory issues which is again leading them to restlessness jumping around self talking and harming themselves so that to keep themselves calm so all the sensory issues like tactile can be affected where the child is not allowing to wear particular type of clothes not, not allowing to hug them or difficult to have a bath or haircut and uh, love with different textures structure uh, textures will be available and auditory they usually close sound uh, close ears for little sounds like uh, whistle in the house or vacuum cleaner which is a daily routine in the house usually child should get adapted after few days but this child will not give, will not be able to get adapted and uh, for big sounds also they may not respond like if there is diwali there is a bomb exploding this item usually he may not respond but the simple sounds they may have issues in visual in visual they can direct look at the light or sunlight continuously without blinking or somebody has very afraid of dark so it may be hypo or hyper in gustatory also uh, they everything what they take is they usually most of the kids taste it whatever it may be it may be uh, uh, edible thing or non edible thing keeping in the mouth uh, can happen and smelling things before eating is also one of the thing and sometimes the child vomits to particular kind of smell usually uh, a child presented with only this complaint they that repeated vomitings around 2 and of years of the child the parents were not worried about the speech the parents were not worried about anything but he was only vomiting uh repeatedly so when went to deep into the history the child had all the symptoms of autism which which were not uh, uh, which were not detected by anyone previously but vomiting gave us a clue whenever there is a smell particular kind of smell in the house when you are exposed to that smell child vomits so that may be present because of the smell and proprioceptive difficulty in balancing will be there these kids are very very smart uh, uh with the handling few things uh, because of difficulty in balancing whenever they are getting down from a any height whatever may be the height they usually get out uh, very slowly this may be because of the proprioceptive difficulties or because of the uh, perception and the depth difficulties was what they have because of the visual uh, problems and vestibular still vestibular issues also they can have this picture shows you uh, everything that i have i hate uh, cutting and washing my hair unable to concentrate overall sense to loud sounds and usually these children chew uh, does not choose uh, smooth food but can chew hard food the most common complaint i usually get from the parent my child is not eating he is not uh, chewing the food he is just gulping it and difficulty in dressing sit sitting legs in w position not a most common symptom but can be present uh, usually walks with or without uh, barefoot uh, toe walking will be present at early stages of autism and there may be deficit in gross motor skills like running and riding a bike at initial part of autism if you treat them they usually start riding bicycles and uh, they don't like being cuddled or tickled and uh, tags in the clothes also uh, we have a tag of particular brand you can also irritate them they cry they all they can cry because of that also most of the parents doesn't understand why the child is crying crying so these are the sensory uh, issues and every sensory issue is affected and 
all sensory issues may not get affected some sensory issues can be affected or in combination they can affect it so that's why it is very difficult to diagnose autism which sensory issues affected we have to take clear history about that so that we have to do a particular therapy sensory integration therapy or ot concentrating on more about that therapy that's why you have to understand what are the sensory issues which got affected so coming to examination head circumference most of the autistic kids will have large head 20% of kids will have large head they said because of abnormal pruning which happens in autism below 2 years of age because of which the size of the brain is little larger that causes large head size and microcephaly can be seen in 15% of cases this is basically because of uh, birth asphyxia what 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 had happened at early early stages perinatal asphyxia or some syndromic child where there is microcephaly this is most commonly associated with intellectual disabilities height and weight measurements because i usually do that because i practice cfg update which i have learned from dr ushana ayak madam so this is very important to me for practicing how the weight gain is there as they are picky eaters and also i am doing diet i want to know whether the child is doing well with height weight and gain weight gain is there or not and it's not going to obesity and he should be weight ma maintaining very uh, proper weight and also should be eating whatever should be uh, whatever is available uh, the diet which i provide so this is one thing uh, most of the times we ignore and cns examination tone reflex and neurological deficits definitely should be uh, examined because uh, most of the children with autism will have hypotonia and children with hypotonia have poorer prognosis studies say that uh, there are another terminology which are most commonly used are hyperactive autism and hypoactive autism hypoactive autism is something where the tone is little less compared to other children in this case the prognosis is little less in hyperactive children they are very ready, ready to learn things because they are very hyperactive and they do like exploring things little bit but in hyperactive they are mostly lethargic sitting at one place not interested in doing things that's why it is very difficult to uh, have a poor prognosis in hypotonic if there is hypotonic autism so these are different terms which are used and uh, neurologic finding like acidic tonic reflex uh, which are present if they if is there further imaging and further examination is necessary rule out any other cause is secondary comorbid condition is there and syndromic feature is also one of the common thing these are the syndromes usually common pres commonly present with autism of which tuberculous sclerosis is fragile x syndrome and angelman syndrome are the common things these are the uh, pictures which i try to collect uh, from the web and uh, usually present with typical facial features and these are the, uh, most commonly i have seen fragile x and angelmans coming with uh, complaints of uh, autism if post graduates if they are they, they, they are in the class they have seen these case i typically tell them to uh, see the child and uh, look at the uh, deformities facial dysmorphisms and compare it to the picture of uh, fragile x syndrome and see where, what what can you match the picture which is present or not so that they can they will not forget in uh, in future so that they can identify uh, fragile x syndrome and comorbid conditions and these syndromes can also be associated with adhd and intellectual disability also that's why uh, uh, when this syndrome comes we have to look into all other features also so early signs of uh, autism so how early uh, how early can be suspected as per Ameri american academy of neurology if there is no babbling or pointing out or gesturing by 12 months of age no single words by 16 months no single words by 16 months or no two words spontaneous echolalia is may be present uh, echolalia is something when you say something they repeat it like they repeat whatever you say like if you ask them what is your name they repeat like what is your name this is echolalia this is not speech development two words spontaneous should should become that should be by 24 months or loss of language or social skills at any of age we can suspect autism these are the clues uh, uh, we can detect as early uh, if present can we can can be detected as early as 12 months but these days it has gone down to we can detect as early as 6 months also by using uh, different scales and the development of the child and we can assess by using uh, scales or by clinical examination or the history properly taking how the child is reacting as early as 6 months also so assessments coming to assessments what i usually practice i told you right we can diagnose child children as as early as 6 months so this is the checklist i usually use infant toddler checklist designed from 6 to 24 months uh, below i have given the website address psychologytools.com where you open it there are different scales of one of the scale is infant toddler checklist there is a page where you have to enter the age of the child and you have to answer the question that automatically gives the result whether the child is risk or at risk or not below 2 years of age we can only say the child is at risk of autism we can't diagnose autism after 2 years probably you can say the child uh, child is having uh, fitting into spectrum child is having a disorder autism spectrum disorder uh, for certification child probably should be more than 3 years 
Uh, so this is the site what I have psychology tools in this. Other skills are also present, but infant toddler checklist is present. We usually apply if the child is comes around seven or eight months. If I suspect if the child is having no proper eye contact, I send to ophthalmology referral. If this ophthalmologist says that everything is fine, then ask. Then probably apply this scale and start uh, start early intervention doing visual uh, vision therapies, early intervention like. Uh, Physiotherapy and speech therapy started as early as possible. If you see children around seven to eight months with few features of autism, this, these are the other scales which usually uh, used. MCAT is a modified checklist for autism. Revised edition and follow up question both are there. This can be used from 16 to 36 months. Uh, uh, so, re revised questionnaire has 20 questions, of which uh, 0 to 3 has uh, low risk, 3 to 8 has uh, moderate risk, more than 8, 8 has high risk of autism. Once you ask the questions, then if the score is like that, the risk is uh, divided. And if the patient is having moderate risk or high risk, definitely you have to start therapies as early as possible. If the child is having low risk, you can do a follow-up questionnaire of MCHAT or ask them to come after one month again for follow-up so that you can reassess them and see whether the child has improved or deteriorated or fitting into autism uh, checklist. These are the most common checklist which is used from 16 to 36 months and most widely used. For children from 3 to 11 years, Childhood autism spectrum test is available and for uh, for adolescents, adolescent autism coefficient and above 16 years, adult autism coefficient. And there is another website which I mentioned below, Autism Canada. This is a free website. Go into screening tools. If you, uh, uh, if you uh, uh, open that screening tools, you have toddler checklist, um, children checklist, uh, teen checklist and adult checklist. From that, you can actually screen the children. This is not a diagnostic test. These are tests which are used for screening. Basically, if there are high risk, probably you can send for further assessments. This may be much easier for, to, for us to do rather than doing the whole questionnaire because whole questionnaire takes a lot of time. And other test uh, for diagnosis, whatever previously I told her, test for screening. This is diagnostic test. Diagnosis can be done by, by using DSM-5 criteria by, by taking proper history and also fitting into diagnostic criteria. If the, if the points are fitting into DSM-5 criteria, probably you can di diagnose uh, autism or ICD-10, IC-11. And for the scale, coming to the scales, uh, childhood autism rating scale uh, version 2 standard uh, test is used for children 2 to 5 years of age. There are two versions of CARS. One is standard test, other is HF. HF is high functioning. Usually 2 to 5 years, CARS S2 is done, Car CARS 2 ST is done. Uh, in this, there are components where you have to score from 1 to 4. After, uh, uh, um, after scoring, one is no abnormality, two is mild, three is moderate, four is high abnormality. There is in-between score like 2.5, in-between 2 and 3. If you notice that the problem is in falling between 2 and 3, you can rate as 2.5. So if the child is uh, having more than 30 to 35, that falls into mild uh, autism, mild to moderate autism, more than 35 is moderate to severe autism. So by the scales, you can do. So when to do ST and HF? Two to five years, you can do standard uh, uh, test for cars and for HF, high functioning autism, if the IQ is more than 85 or above five years, usually do HF. Uh, if the children is uh, having intellectual disability, if the mental age is not fitting or if the child is having mild intellectual disability, in those cases, again, ST can be used. This could be very confusing, uh, but you have to assess mental age before going for any test so that it will give you exact results. And ESA is Indian Scale for Assessment of Autism, which is developed by uh, NIMH. And it is widely used by NIMH. And this is also used for certification. It is pre pretty easy questionnaire, has four domains. It will give you, uh, you can actually ask the questions, uh, ask the questions and uh, tick the answers. Based on that, if you add, you will get the results. Based on that, you can actually rate mild, moderate, and severe autism. This is, this is one, this one is very easy to use. CARS requires little effort to do. And for follow-up, this is the uh, questionnaire visual, usually I follow autism treatment evaluation checklist, which is available online. Uh, this is uh, a website where you can enter all the details. If you want to enter the patient details, you can enter. Otherwise, you don't have to enter. You get the checklist. This autism treatment evaluation checklist has four domains, speech, social, sensory, and behavioral and physical issues. These are the four domains usually affected in autism. There can be combination of uh, domains affected or whole domains can be affected. Once you do checklist at the start of your treatment, and when you do it at follow-up after two months, you, you can know which area is improved and which area is not improved. Based on that, you can plan your treatment. That's why the follow-up questionnaire is very important. Most of the kids, I see autism is, they do questionnaires, uh, they do a assessment initially, a labeled uh, diagnosis of autism. 
after two years also there is no other follow up test or uh, nothing is done but therapists do their occupational therapy test speech therapy will speech therapist will do their respective test but again uh, follow up questionnaire of autism will not be there either cars whatever you do uh, which, which do, it should be repeated usually every six months sometimes every one year based on the child's presentation this this is the most common questionnaire easily available online if you can't send it to a psychologist you can do it on your own so that to assess with the child which area the child is improving so coming to the treatment it, it depends on a lot of factors like age of presentation if the child is presenting as early as 6 to uh, 6 months uh, above 6 months of age rather than starting an ot and everything we start usually an early intervention therapy where different type of physiotherapies are used uh, therapies for stimulation of uh, muscle and vision therapy if there is a visual problem and uh, uh, and speech therapy for little, little later age group, like one year speech therapy is started. And high risk below two years, as I told you, uh, we have to only uh, consider risk at that age, but I can't diagnose. And child diagnose, can be diagnosed by about two years in these cases. Usually starts with occupational therapy. If the IQ is uh, uh, borderline intelligent, uh, uh, the child, if the child is borderline intelligence. And you have to also assess strengths and weakness, which I already discussed. I, I usually like to work on strengths of the child rather than weakness. Basically, Every child, most of the occupational therapy activities are in such a way that every child cannot do every activity. So some child is very good at uh, doing beads. Some child are, children, children are very good at uh, painting. Some children are very good at uh, doing some other activity. So we know that we should know the strengths of the child. Based on the strengths, I usually tell the parents to complicate the task. So that uh, once the strength improves, the child's sitting tolerance will improve. The issues of sensory issues will come down and child start to focus more. So that you can then uh, point uh, start with weakness also. So we have to also see the associated comorbid conditions. If there are associated comorbid ADHD, then probably you have to start stimulants and non-stimulants based on the child's risk factors. And regular follow-up and risk assessment by attack is pretty, Im pretty important. And what most of the times missing in autism, uh, what I see is every child of autism presentation is different. The symptoms vary with age. The symptoms what presented two years are pretty different at four years of age. That's why. You have to tailor made treatment for every child based on your attack scores or based on your assessment. What are the uh, deficits the child has? You have to focus on that and uh, treat that. Most of them go for speech therapy and does not go for occupational therapy because they think it is only speech problem. That is that 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 may cause much more problems and you may waste time. And uh, parents have to make understand that this child requires occupational therapy and speech therapy. Initially, occupational therapy should be started. After that, you start with speech therapy or ABA is ad advanced therapy. You have ABA around, you can also start with ABA. So every child have to be assessed properly uh, in those domains which are affected and based on that, treatment should be act appropriately planned. Then only the improvement will be seen. The same routine treatment, the same things will not fail for every children, every child. So if the child is not improving, if the child is showing any regression while you are treating, probably you have to reassess and see, and you have to tailor the treatment. So, what is the medical protocol for autism is there for USFDA approved medications? Sir, if the child is more than three years, you can start on second generation antipsychotics for behavior problems like low dose aripiprazole, uh, respiridone, and as well as olanzapine is also given these days, uh, which has used every approved. If hyperactivity is there, uh, between three to five years, you can start clonidine, uh, 0.1 to 0.3 micrograms uh, per kg per day. Uh, maximum is 300 micrograms per kg per day and you have to monitor BP for this and uh, if, if there is comorbid ADHD then stimulants and non-stimulants can be added at later age by 5 years or 4 years of age based on the presentations. I have seen uh, uh, seniors adding propanolol when there is a lot of social anxiety when the child is taken to a public place child becomes very cranky, very irritable maybe because of uh, sensory issues maybe because he's not uh, very happy with the social surroundings because of many reasons child may be irritable. In those, propanolol will be helping. Uh, uh, in cases when where there are uh, repetitive restrictive behaviors which are very high, which look like most of the times like OCD, repeated behaviors, repeated activities, which you are not able to control because of that child is not focusing. In those cases, fluoxetin may help in some times. And CFGF diet is one thing which I usually follow, which includes a particular diet pattern. And studies say that uh, there are few papers which usually say that the gut microbe, most of the children, at almost 85% of children with autism have gut issues. Leaky gut syndrome is the term which is usually used. In these cases, avoiding some foods will definitely improve uh, symptoms of autism. Initially, when you start diet, there will be a decrease in hyperactivity. Improved sitting tolerance and eye contact will be seen. And I have seen kids improving CFG of diet along with therapies. 
this is not the primary treatment this is a support treatment usually helps in diet a diet along with therapies usually helps and there is improvement with that i have seen along with supplemental medications like omega 3 fatty acids pyridoxine and right now l carnosine is most commonly used which which they say that it's working well most of the studies so these are the supplemental medications which i usually use at my clinic and at the practice at at nilo for also so that uh, a child kept on diet does not lose adequate nutrition supplement of calcium because the child is not on milk so cfg of dice is other thing which i usually practice coming to therapies occupational therapy this is most commonly used and done by a, a qualified therapist this helps the kids to uh, to achieve uh, to achieve to do their daily activities uh, independently basically occupation is something whatever your occupation is i am a doctor being a doctor doing looking at the patient is my occupation being a child is occupation is doing daily routine activities like brushing bathing and uh, going to school reading and studying and sitting at one place playing and all those things are his occupation so basically it helps a child to improve in all these activities this also reduces sensory issues improves both gross motor and fine motor functions strength tolerance improved helps in overall improvement of speech and communication there are different types of activities those include physical activities like jumping and trampling walking on different texture of surfaces swing you can see all these things here swinging methods running here and there uh, jumping uh, um, uh, climbing ups climbing up a ladder and uh, coming down the ladder all these are some activities which usually done in ot centers for sitting tolerance there are bead activities uh, crayon coloring activities puzzles and all those has to be done both combination of this will help uh, uh, to improve the child so that the child can do their own activity uh, in a near future so this has to be done at the same time advising parents some activities at home based on the child's strengths will help them will will help the parents so that whenever the child is cranky when the child is not cooperating they can go to do by those activities so that the child does those activities and child will be calmer and much better and the improvement will be much higher so uh, before i tell therapies i usually tell parent that therapies is part of treatment along with parents have to work on child more therapist will do his job but parents have much bigger job to do because they have to work on the child so that, so that the child improves much faster if you are only depending on therapies and doing therapies and if you are not doing anything at home probably the improvement will be there but it will be little slower there may be uh, less improvement compared to whatever the therapies are done at home so again coming to speech therapy assessment of speech is necessary which is done by reels which is caused, called called as receptive expressive language uh, assessment where you assess the child's receptive language and also expressive language at what is there based on that you plan a treatment and start uh, uh, start from that particular point of time if the child's uh, age is around 2 years but his expressive language is only 9 months you have to start treatment from there from ex uh, expressive language if receptive is fine most of the kids with uh, autism will have good receptive scores but expressive scores will be on the lower side in this they also include oral massages where you ask the child to um, mother to rub uh, thumbs on the Uh, thumbs on the outer uh, cheeks uh, anti clockwise and clockwise for 5 to 10 minutes different tongue exercises are used using a straw to drink water or whistle uh, or balloons can be loaded so that the child will have proper uh, muscle development here and can pronounce properly using pictures and gestures also is one of the things where speech therapists therapists use so that they they can learn different letters and alphabets and uh, most of the times they'll be they'll be taught in phonetics wise where a, a not like a b c d that like a is called as a b is called as ba phonetics is something which usually children of autism learns very quickly and for, by improving this phonetics the pronunciation of the child will become much better and uh, uh, available only in english and canada is uh, uh, canada because nimhans is there it is available in canada language and english it is available i don't know whether other languages are available or not but it's not available in telugu that is why most of the therapies which are doing therapies what we do are mostly most of one available in only english that's why we have to know what uh, is uh, what can we do for this children particular activities for based on your attack scores usually i i usually do that and uh, for therapies coming to this most advanced therapy called applier behavior analysis it's based on both clinic, classical and operant conditioning by thorndike and uh, skinner where uh, positive behavior positive behavior is Uh, improved by doing uh, positive reinforcement and negative behavior uh, is uh, restricted by doing giving negative reinforcements this is the basic principle 
most advanced and standardized therapies most commonly used in western countries done by behavior analyst certified behavior analyst there are courses which are available also by bcba certified analyst from london it's very pretty costly course you can do it if you want and it includes abc model of behavior modeling what is abc model abc model is antecedent behavior and consequences for any behavior to occur there should be answered and antecedent incident which is leading to behavior for that behavior there will be a consequence this is called abc model so based on that abc model where to intervene is very important and usually in behavior therapy the analyst usually observes the immediate environment basically where the child is uh and why the behavior has occurred if somebody said no or somebody pulled away his toys or he is taken to a social place where he is not able to bear the sounds uh, or he is not happy with whatever he is eating the child starts throwing a tantrum or becoming cranky the child basically we have to observe the immediate environment and based on that child's behavior should be addressed so that's why this is more advanced therapy than behavior modification where behavior modification focuses only on behavior but here it focuses also on environment that's why it is more advanced and standardized the most common things which are involved in abr motivation reinforcement both positive and negative and shaping the behavior after the attainment of the behavior and prompting uh, or something where you prompt uh, some letter if the child is not able to talk or switch or uh, say something then you prompt say say bye to the tangle then he says bye waves him and says bye prompting something like that or when he is trying to write something prompt holding his hand and pushing him to write something prompting and be all these things which can be done in aba and modeling is one therapy where you have to behave like autistic child the first thing which happens in treating with uh, in dealing with autism children as a parent i tell them joining is in, joining in in one of the basic technique in autism joining in is something where you have to behave as child if he runs run like him if he jumps jump like him if he plays with a particular toy get that get a extra toy like that and play like him so that he tries to join you he 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 helps you to enter enter allows you allows the you allows parent to his environment once you enter his environment he starts cooperating and whatever you say he starts doing things this is joining in technique and modeling the behavior where you don't shout at the child where you don't say no for everything where uh, you should not be punishing the child for everything you have to have a model behavior holding the cell phone and sitting in the chair, sitting in front of the child and not asking the child to ask for cell phone will not be a proper modeling style that's why you have to be a role model as a parent or as a therapist or a clinician so that their child will pick up the particular habits by observing i have seen autism kids they observe everything they know everything the only problem is expression if they don't have intellectual disability this helps in improving and achieving new behaviors this is the most advanced therapy uh, uh, which is available in uh, it is available in hyderabad also very few therapy centers are there which does aba and the advanced most advanced technique this is app based learning uh mainly for non verbal kids we have given therapies and the child is not improving and the child needs child knows to communicate non verbally but uh, 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 child knows to communicate uh, non verbally but not verbally there is a app uh, there is a app based on argumentative and alternative communication or uh, app is called as avas where there are different pictures activities different kinds of uh, uh, words where child can pick up and press up if he presses on that button if the child wants play time there is a play time button then he presses that button and it find it the app makes the sound of its play time then parents have to go and start playing with him on involve in, indulge him in some activity if it's food time then he presses that button for lunch or dinner time that that is the most commonly used avas app which is which is widely used in india which is mainly for non verbal uh, uh, kids these are the few things which are latestly available and there are some games which are uh, used in autism to improve concentration attention but i don't want to go through these games uh, though i don't want to uh, it's pretty complicated to make those games understanding for autism children if the after improving the concentration is deficit probably those games will help uh, this is one app which is recently uh, used not recently it is used by many non verbal kids i'm seeing using uh, them but using this has app and disadvantage where child probably may not verbalize in future so that's why i usually ask when the child had adequate amount of therapy adequate treatment if the child is not improving then go for these kind of things where it will help for in future communication and usually he communicates in better way thank you thank you everyone thank you rishi thank you rishi for your excellent presentation and highly informative presentation and dr rishi uh, you, you want to you want to talk please 
sir uh, uh. i welcome uh, dr minhas the president elect and there okay, is uh, dr uma shankar sir the uh, south zone representative uh, and uh, we have uh, dr keshav rao sir also in the panelist i request dr minhas to give brief note and uh, dr uma shankar sir dr keshav rao sir please Thank you, sir. That's a very good, excellent presentation by the Rishi. I think it is a wonderful presentation as well as it is helpful to the most of the people. And definitely, it is very useful thing. Thank you for uh, giving the opportunity to uh, join with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. sir Dr. Keshav, sir. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Judge. yeah this is a uh, very lucid presentation uh, very clear with lot of examples uh, particularly the clinical features the way they present it i know it comes with lot of experience uh, rishi has lot of experience in nilo for both as a pediatrician and child psychiatrist um he, he gave a number of uh, this kind of scales also what scales to use very helpful and the treatment modalities also very clearly explained Uh, i would like to add few things um, mainly from uk perspective uh, what i noticed in india is the, the patients the children who come are more severe uh, most of them probably have a significant uh, component of uh, intellectual problems uh, global developmental problems so but what we as psychiatrists uh, we see in uk are very mild very mild so they come to us at the age of 8 or 10 when they are in the school and they develop problems uh, particularly they lack in social skills uh, they are usually picked up by other children and this kind of uh, children i have also seen in india also uh, these are from high high end schools uh, one of the child i saw very clearly um, he was seen by i should not say by someone here but they didn't pick it up because uh, you know, for us autism means they they need to have um, kind of a typical uh, typical uh, clinical features but this some children are only just have problems with the with their com communication or social skills they are very concrete in their thinking they have kind of hobbies which are very restricted hobbies and when they interact with other children they interact on their terms so suddenly they they play and leave the play in the middle so they are usually picked up by other children that is a very important uh, uh, feature of uh, uh, mild uh, autistic spectrum disorders so the scales we use are uh, social communication questionnaire it is very good at uh, picking up children with social communication problem it's called sqq um, it has a parent version and a child version and i think a teacher version also it's very helpful Uh, but but you have to pay for it but there is another question called assq which is freely available autistic um, spectrum screening questionnaire and that is very helpful um, it is very easy to do you can ask the parent or teacher to do it and that is another one usually we in uk what you do is we do the screening questionnaire and then they go for a detailed assessment like ados uh, but it is they are very time consuming but in our situation all those things are not required and as um, rishi has said uh, educating parent is the most important thing i think that is the most important thing not this therapy and all this lot of parents spend lot of money um, i have seen people going to speech therapies some development comes automatically with course with course of time if, if after one year the child will definitely have few more words we don't know whether it is because of speech therapy or it has a natural thing unless there is a double blind kind of trial we don't know whether it is work really working or not in that particular child so the most important thing is to educate the parent to understand what autism is how to respond to them how to bring into activities and particularly this kind of training them in the social skills there are books like social stories in uk and when i read this social stories i was surprised that thousand years ago we had this pachatantra which is nothing but a form of social stories much more interesting than their social stories so maybe we should make use of those things also and the other uh, point i want to tell is and we get older children age 12 13 years on 
and these children autistic spectrum they come to, to us at, at that time again difficulties with uh, social interaction and they have a kind of anxiety anxiety without any reason they don't have any reason kind of generalized anxiety they respond well to sertraline and if they don't respond then we go to low dose of aripiprazole or sometimes risperidone so this is i think the briefly the variations between india and uk and once again i congratulate rishi for his excellent presentation thank you thank you dr keshavar sir uh, for the audience uh, uh, i think i didn't introduce dr keshavar sir uh, for those who are not psychiatrists uh, dr keshavar sir is uh, child and adolescent psychiatrist at the uk uh, i request dr gauri madam uh, to give her valuable inputs madam Uh, thank you, Judge Reddy. At the outset, I congratulate Rishi for giving a wonderful 360 degree presentation. Okay. <laughs> He has covered everything, and uh, I mean, I don't think I need to add anything more. I just want to say there are changing trends now. At least I've been practicing uh, child psychiatry for the past 40 years. There is changing trends in the sense of late the parents are very sensitive. They are able to pick up any deviance. like many people come say that there is speech uh, de uh, delay could it be autism their child is not uh, you know looking at the straight uh, could it be autism you know the child is not really playing with other children is it autism that means the, the trend is that the parents are very sensitive and they are aware of uh, the things happening and they are really scared of autism you know could it be that yeah, even if it's a specific speech delay they do come that's one wonderful thing about uh, the I mean uh, parents i would say the changing trends and coming to uh, the i always uh, find that early intervention uh, sorry early identification is very very important as you rightly pointed out uh, you will be in a better position to understand around one year of age you know when the child starts talking and then the you know verbally the child verbally non verbally the way the child you know interacts with the parents that's very very important because primarily with the parent the child should be interacting very well the way if there is any problem like no uh, like anticipatory movements towards the parents if they are act not there you know as early as 6 months or 8 months you can identify that's one thing i just need to add and coming to uh, i mean i don't go into a lot of details you have already spoken about it yeah Uh, like in our center what we do is uh, children who are brought below 10, 2 years of age like in uh, yam chat we invariably do it and we uh, try to do dst and also as you say like the uh, yes, therapy functioning we do assess whether the child there is there any discrepancy between the development as well as the social communication and other things and we always if the sensory issues even if they are minimal i try to get the evaluation by the occupation therapist and the speech therapist so it, it invariably will have psychological assessment the speech evaluation occupation therapy evaluation invariably it will be done we tell them i mean we and we need to have baseline we need to know how the child is improving so after that we generally discuss with the parents what are the things we need to and many times i find that the another trend i am seeing is they do come to us when we tell that it could be risk for autism uh, they don't accept you know they do come with the doubt the moment you try to say that there is risk invariably i always tell them risk for autism even after 3 years of age because you need to prime them and prepare them okay so i said there is risk for the autism and i tell few pointers these are the things that make me feel and and also i tell about the positive things about the child you know high functioning of the child or the child's rote memory is very memories. good those things we talk, talk about it so that why i think uh, one need to early identification early intervention early intervention i mean i went to all the uh, i mean australian uk europe and uh, american versions of all the therapies i formulated one therapy i mean it's a combination of this basically primary early intervention at home including i mean especially grandparents and the parents so i call it asha behavioral and comprehensive and development based uh, early intervention that's what i call it as a very very simple thing with uh, you know flash cards and other things we do it right from the age of one year 
that's all. I mean, I found uh, coming to the prognosis part of it, I found wonderful improvement within six months of starting early intervention. So I base on early intervention. Now, the first thing I would go for is operation therapy because you need to improve sitting tolerance. Then only you send for some people, they simultaneously do it. It doesn't really work. Parents will be disappointed. So operation therapy, behavioral modification. Then maybe you can introduce in between the speech therapy and then medication. Of course, I do put them on medication. Maybe I'm one person, I'm not too much for diet because the evidence for you know, CFGS diet is not very much. Maybe it's a just add-on or you know, there are children who lost weight and then they become cranky with the food adjustments and other things. Maybe I don't totally go for it. Maybe once in a way, I do use it. Thanks for giving me this opportunity just to share a few of my uh, vertical center experiences. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Pawan, uh, can we take up the questions? Sir, yes, sir. Uh, sir, Ramsubhad, sir. Yes, sir. I think uh, Dr. Geeta Chella, madam, raised her hand. Uh, layer, sir, madam. Madam Lena, okay. So one cause, uh, uh, one uh, question from anonymous attendee uh, asked about causes of autism. So uh, basically, cause of autism is not one single thing. It is multifactorial. Basically, biopsychosocial profile. There will be some genetic component along with the child's uh, any insult during birth or complications during pregnancy. Maybe there may not be there child psyche or temperaments along with export to a particular environment where epigenetics play a major role. So it's basically biopsychosocial environment. And one thing I need to stress is there are so many studies they say that bad parenting is not a cause of autism. So I, I, most of the parents come, come and say that I feel guilty that I could not take care of the child and I am going to work. And they say that bad parenting may not be primary cause. It may aggravate autism, but it is not the primary cause. This is multifactorial, basically dependent on many, many things. We can't focus on one thing and every child has different factors to cause autism. That's why it's very difficult to pinpoint one cause for autism. Uh, Rishi, uh, Devi asks, is it suitable assessments to Indian countries? Same tools also suitable to all countries. Whatever the screening questionnaires are, very easy screening questionnaires, what I told you. It can be used in Indian scenario because I use it and uh, there are common things which you use in very few questions are uh, based on hobbies or these things which are not usually common in India. These questions are there for adolescent and teens, the questionnaires. But uh, by the age that age comes, probably you already know the child has autism. I only gave you a list of screening questionnaires and they can be applied in any other country also because it is available only in English. All the screening questions, cars can be applied everywhere. ESA is Indianized version. And it is very useful for India. EDOS is one thing which is usually used in European and Western countries. It is very lengthy scale. Um, but in India, probably cars are most commonly used. Cars and ISA. Which one? It's both things. Yeah. Uh, G. Ushashri asks, uh, if the autism child have the effect of Bandra experiment. So basically, it's Albert's one. He's talking about, uh, I think, social learning theory, where it's booby doll experiment, where you a doll and child keeps silent so uh, it's more like a shadow teaching kind of thing and uh, it may help it may not help uh, uh, cases cases you have to know whether the child is understanding from others perspective which is very less in case of autism so if you have a specific toy and if you try to start hitting the toy child may become cranky or he may learn it is very difficult to say that and there is no such example that social learning theory has particular effect on autism uh, treatment very few points are there uh, which helps usually if you are probably the child is not eating well and you should eat, make eat at all. There are so many videos also that have came up with similar examples saying that in star reels, which I have seen that child is not eating and they feed a doll and if they hit the child, then the uh, child starts feeding. So basically it is kind of that experiment. So it is very difficult to say whether it works or not. And I'm not very sure of it. Okay. And um, Dr. Radha Krishnan VK asks, uh, says excellent presentation. How many percentage of your patients 
need as any psychiatric medication with other therapies so basically i look i, I if i start on cfgf data i start on supplemental medication but if you're if you're if the child is more than 5 years and child is not cooperating studies for studies 4 or 5 years old then probably i would like to add uh, uh, low dose antipsychotics to make the child sit because the time is very very important for treatment if the child is growing older and older it is very difficult for the child to bring him back and make him sit and we hear problems also will increase with as age increases if child is more than 4 years and not cooperating for therapies probably psychiatric medication will help to make him sit but not for improvement everything else is only a supportive treatment rather than make it if there is comorbid other conditions like adhd then probably you can use stimulants and non stimulants but directly they don't help for autism it's only a cover up thing where partially helps to make him sit and reduce the behavior problems so that he cooperates for therapies okay uh that was sumrana wahid is requesting you for uh, this question is uh, rishi uh i uh, yeah, i'll try to share uh, uh, basically it's freely available yeah i'll nivedita madam as uh, great presentation thank you uh should we address the issue when a young adult more than 18 years gives history suggestive of autism that has hampered him hampered them making good social interaction presenting now with depression anxiety and suicidality can we help them more by diagnosing them now or just treat the depression present basically if the child if the patient is not communicative now and if communication is not helping him for or uh, depression and anxiety they have definitely address and depression anxiety and work on social skills so that he doesn't go relapse again so work on his social skills will be very very important and tell him how to pick up on his work social skills and you have to focus what exactly is causing the problem and you have to if you address the problem that thing and you can send him for therapies at that age also for improving social communication and reducing anxiety whenever he is trying to go for a social uh, social uh, gatherings and everything or some lecture some class whatever he is doing in this case it, both medications can help and you have to treat primary conditions then then address the social uh, difficulties um rishi can i add uh, sir, from my sure, little experience sure sir sure sir basically the question of uh i don't know someone asked radha krishna what what is the percentage or how many of your patients are on medication see basically it's about not uh, about medication per se uh when we are uh, we i think i do follow the gfcf diet uh, so there again the role of carni l carnisin is now establishing so <clears throat> or omega 3 fatty acids or we are trying to supplement with calcium or multivitamins or any kind of b complex so might be these are not looked at as medicines at that early phase but uh, let's say the child is below 3 years and still he has severe issues in with his behavior is he has almost uh, uh, almost all the features of adhd again so we we can't say adhd below the age of 7 but uh, if the therapists are you know uh, we have good liaison with them i think definitely starting medication at an early age definitely benefits the child because as you said uh, it's again about the sitting tolerance it's about the child trying to accept the therapies which is most crucial at that early phase early intervention definitely as a role but unfortunately again now again a controversy statement from me might be uh, many therapists uh, I, we don't we don't know why many times they they, they say that you know drugs are um, they they harmful yes. and many times they they try to you know uh, discourage the parents uh, um, but might be I, it's again a part of the story anyway but definitely the role of medication particularly clonidine you know and i use uh, a clonidine in many children even below the age of 5 years nimhans uses a lot of uh, clonidine and might be we see wonderful improvement on these kind of medicines and mild doses of anti psychotics when we start low when we go slow role of risperidone role of aripiprazole and even i use lot of propranolol Uh, in the young children the only thing is monitoring them at every visit you know you just at this auscultate and you just check how things are and usually normotensive 
there is no uh, worry about using clonidine though the title is anti hypertensive or propranolol is anti hypertensive many times educated parents they google and say doctor sir we are giving my child some anti hypertensive like an anti psychotic only thing is if we can develop good liaison with our therapist and i think uh, at least those my therapists they encourage uh, parents they in fact in fact they educate them uh, about the role of medication and uh, children uh definitely we have to consider at every point of time whether medication can go hand in hand with the therapy so that the outcome of the recovery is much better rather than stigmatizing that a psychiatrist is writing medication i think that's the catch and that's a controversy yeah thank you rishi yeah. uh, uh rishi sir regarding the uh, incidence of autism in immigration children is more i think if they communicate with the mother language i think there will be some improvement by, by, might be there they usually speak telugu in home sir but uh, i don't know whether it is a language or not but most of the immigration kids have, have developed autism uh, in, in the in the uh -huh, in the family they speak only telugu or uh, mixed language it's a mixed language kind of pattern sir most of the times what they use mm -hmm. but they some other study says that there is no relation with the language and uh, development of autism it's only the immigration during the development period probably the change of environment has major role rather than speech itself yeah rather than only language itself Multiple. what is the, what, what is the role of kind of screen time like now now today children very young children are exposed to yes, this um, smartphones yes, and they get glued to it they don't bother to talk look at the other child or get interested in other child so some way this kind of socialization in the early life probably is restricted yes, and yeah, yeah. one has to restrict the main screen time definitely yes. it's not the receipt not and the, and we see this kind of uh, you know, kind of autism presentation mostly in kind of uh, children of uh, software people i don't know we have more software people or it is uh, um, statistically whether it is right or not but most patients i see the parents are uh, software probably the child is exposed to this and the child doesn't bother to kind of make eye contact with other children or socialize so that may be an important thing and the late pregnancy is probably all these people are having children very late and there is also the use of pesticides in our food there may be so many things i i personally I, i don't think that it is to do with uh, immigration or something uh, but i think more i think more in these lines rather than immigration line and maybe, also maybe and so also true. and also about the use of uh, the the uh, gluten free diets and special diets uh, is there any kind of uh, uh, evidence uh, kind of uh, double so bind the evidence are not there are not but definitely there is some improvement sir no 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 no, no. no. You, see, you, if you you can see if you patients improving it may be just their different course because the course is so variable Uh, unless you have a randomized study we cannot say that is scientific and yes, the, the 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 negative the, on the, uh, the other side is um, you are unnecessarily putting a lot of restriction on the child who is already not eating properly has food fats and all that yeah, that so, problem is there yeah, we have to also take that into account so as far as uk is concerned there is uh, absolutely no food no, restriction no food nothing restriction. like nothing like gluten free diet yeah so once come to cfg of diet sir when i usually when i start cfg of diet i hold therapies for at least one to two months so one mm -hmm. month or two months before starting the, then i'll see whether improvement is there with diet or not then only i'll continue if there is improvement and so say some okay. and yeah. some, some parents on therapies will come without no improvement and i start on cfg of diet i see improvement so mm -hmm. i wanted to do a double blinded sorry sir but ethical committee because it is related to children and restricting so many foods for children will definitely they have some issues no. and being being no. a period see, see it being... is very simple it is very simple i will tell you how to go around it just give you the treatment and you afterwards you do a retrospective study you, you don't Give, get yeah, giving uh, uh, sir giving because being a pediatrician that helps me mm. a lot for advising a proper nutrition sir rather than mm. the child is not eating this and i usually design a eating pattern for the particular child what your child is interested in what is the type of snack you can give what are the things you can give Uh, the edge is there because i'm a pediatrician also sir that's 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 and, and, uh, and another last point i want to emphasize is, is i tell the parents um, educating parents is most important and i tell them don't bother about the diagnosis of autism 
Yes. Tell me what is your problem and how to address that problem. Uh, particularly the kind of spectrum people, that is more important. The child may have only a sensory issue which is really troubling them, or the child may have only a communication kind of social problem, which is so that probably focus on that and train the parents on that. That's how it's, how I do it. Yeah. Thank you. With uh, regard to the immigration or uh, migration thing, sir, is it the change in the primary caregiver that is uh, in India? If you have we have all the grandmothers, grandparents attending to the child's needs, and once they go abroad, does it have any impact? And if so, like to what extent? Uh, can you permit me? I think I, can, I would like to answer a couple of things. Yes, uh, Yeah, I think uh, Keshara has uh, brought out quite a few important things. Uh, screen time. I have seen a number of parents, especially when both of them are uh, working, and especially IT professional, they have iPads and they have all these gadgets with them. And they expose the children right from six months of age. And the screen time will be more than three to four hours below one year of age. And these children, when they come with autistic symptoms, and then take them off from that and expose them to natural environment and other things, and the language improves, the eye contact improves, and everything. That means definitely it has. That means you're not exposing them to the natural social communication and uh, the social behavior. So that's very, very important. It's very valid. I have seen number of children, the moment they are taken off, they are better. Coming to your immigration part of it, you are talking about it. Many of the parents, uh, uh, I mean, they are working and or if they're not working, also husband goes for work and the woman has to work all the, I mean, household told she has to do and look after the child. So she sends, I mean, she keeps the child in front of the uh, you know, telephone, sorry, and TV, or she's not able to handle the child, stimulate the child early. These children, when they are brought here, I kept them for six months here, exposing them to grandparents and many people around. See, the social milieu is very, very important. The children, the, the, the so-called children in, uh, you know, USA, when they are exposed to only parents, when they're brought back, you know, they're socializing well, and then they communicate the language, everything. They're so stimulated, they respond so beautifully. So this, that, that means immigration part of it, it's lack of social stimulation, which is very, very important, I feel. And then IT professional, invariably, I, in fact, I, <laughs> 20 years back, when I'd seen uh, uh, people with uh, IT professionals having these children, I did ask them, I mean, they got really offended. I told them, how would their seven analysis and other things, they really got offended. In a soft way, I asked them, because we don't know the, the, the way they keep uh, exposure to the radiation and the, they keep laptops. Because maybe there is what to call changes in the sperms and then the motility and all those things can produce. Uh, and, uh, I mean, and there are studies, they say like it is more, but they don't show the cause and uh, effect of the autism. You know, IT people having children with autism is not really cause and effect is not shown, but association is shown in the studies. So this is what I just wanted to add. Yeah, there are quite a few questions uh, shared. Uh, one from Dr. Mahazid, uh, who says, uh, what diet uh, you suggest for autism? It's already been discussed, I suppose. Dr. Kala Madhuri asks, uh, what are the preventive measures? So basically, preventive measures are very large things. It's a, again becomes a separate topic. Recently, there is a book released, Autism 360. Um, I try to go through that book once we designed, thought of a title, and it is recent publication by 2021. In that, it clearly describes uh, most of the children with autism have parents with autoimmune disorders, allergic disorders, autoimmune disorders, irritable bowel syndromes, and during deliveries, there may be most of the cases are. Uh, sections and maybe hypothyroid mothers and not uh, nutritionally very good at uh, during a pregnancy or consanguineous marriage. There are a lot of possibilities he have given. So you have to address all those issues. Most common things, which usually safe delivery, regular antenatal checkups, maintaining the health of the mother, both mental and physical health, and not using any particular medications for anything without advice of the doctor and having a safe delivery. Post delivery also monitoring the child regularly. The one thing we miss is regular, uh, these days, uh, previously when I was a, 
uh, kid and my father was a doctor there was there used to be a family doctor where the child used to be taken and asked for advice for food and everything which is lacking nowadays they visit only for consultations for food uh, only for uh, fever and all those things well let's clip it so only that's why we have to monitor the child for at least for two years for his both developmental physical and mental development that is mandatory now probably iap is also going to make it mandatory for every pediatrician so that they develop so that we can educate all these things help to prevent and pick up early also so there may be uh, all these things have to be educated and there is one more program which has started called arogya janani started by ramakrishna amat basically to prevent all these kind of neurodevelopment Arya. disorders yeah arogya janani arya janani uh, arya janani sorry arya, arya janani arya janani program where they are yoga techniques for mothers which are helpful chanting some mantras to prevent uh, it's a spiritual based thing to prevent all this kind of neurodevelopment disorders we don't know the results yet they are early st- early stages of doing all these things but prevention looks at lot of things not just one thing mm-hmm. but during pregnancy both mother and child mental health is pretty pretty uh, mother's mental health is pretty pretty important and uh, she should be physically also very healthy yeah like uh, uh lot of these uh, children with autism have this pinching and aggressive behaviors and neeraja purni asks how to handle these things so basically if you are if you are going for therapies then the child is going for therapies and if you address these issues to the therapist they can handle these things and if you want to handle any yourself the child is around 3 years as we spoke about medication you can start as low dose respiridone uh, rather than clonidine will not help in behavior problems it only helps most of the times hyperactivity low dose respiridone or aripiprazole most of the times will help to decrease this high uh, behavioral issues but if the child is having particular behavioral issues in particular situation like if he wants something demanding something and when you say no then he starts doing cranking and everything then probably reinforcements all those things diverting techniques all these things work where we have to understand and let the therapist know why he is doing and understand should have a communication with the therapist so that you can address both the things you can give low dose medications if you want if the child is more than 3 years probably you can start on low dose erbiprazole uh one uh, attendee asks like what uh, food modifications can improve autism as you were talking about i think uh, that was already answered but if you want to add anything further that's that's going to be another class again it, we have to talk about bacteria good bacteria bad bacteria opportunistic bacteria that's going to be a very big class again and how it works also very important you should know when to start how to start and what are the things should be given that's again going to be a very big class so it's very difficult to tell uh, what exactly it is once you know basic pathophysiology then only you will believe that uh, the diet will work then then only the start of medication and what medications you are giving is at particular time is very very important so that's going to be very different class again it's it's whole it takes more time one member asks uh, rishi like as an extended family how can we help kids with autism the gauri madam has already answered that mm-hmm. but uh, you so pa- parents usually socialization difficulties will decrease when the child is exposed to grandparents and everything but one thing which i usually uh, see is leaving with grandparents and going away for countries again a difficult problem because grandparents cannot uh, handle the child because the child is very energetic and the energy levels of grandparents are very less but combined family will definitely help with much more better interactions and he'll be used to larger social environment where the anxiety of the child will uh, come down and adaptable will be much better and interactions will be much much better and i have seen kids of same age with autism will interact better rather than the older people and when i tell the parents also if you want to give some instructions go to their eye level and tell them clearly not stand and look at their eye go to the eye level get their attention keep something around your eye a toy or a, something to uh, to get their attention towards your eye and tell the instruction so that they can follow it much, much easier much yeah. better way and dr challa sv krishnavasan asks what are the occupations that are feasible for adults with autism into we have yeah. basically there is an assessment for occupational therapy and uh, after assessing ot you have to know which deficits are there based on the therapy is planned that's why it is i call it tailor made therapy rather than doing all the therapies at one time hmm. uh, they, can, one, they can work in stock exchange very well stock yeah. exchange okay. yes. sir kesaro sir how many adult autism cases have you seen no there are but we actually i think we miss them actually um definitely senior huh? probably probably those who are no i have not i have seen two or three but mm. uh, but probably those who are in kind of marital therapy kind of thing they will be seeing more because these people get into uh, re- kind of problems uh, marital problems relationship difficulties so they should be seeing more so that is more of a psychologist who 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 do who, who do it 
so but i don't uh, know just <laughs> just to add sir i think it at nimh i think there is a department called as department mm -hmm. of uh, adult mm -hmm. independent mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. right where these children uh, adolescents going into adult might be there is a pre vocational course um, the pre vocational therapy they started at the age of 16 and after 18 they start the vocational Meaning. therapy so might be it's bas they basically they evaluate the iq and then they check the child's potential and that's where they send them for training might be uh, some kind of computer courses are being taught and for high high functioning children gradually they are doing adult autism coefficient yes yes sir yes sir vocational training is there sir now it is there at nmh sir might as, be but that, again about that, placements again it, the nmh even offers them placements they they liaison with many institutes and uh, but the, the problem is uh, the high functioning kids for them to uh, get into placement might be okay but for those uh, whose uh, iq is much lower you know they they into kind of made some kind of wax uh, candy making book binding job uh, this kind of things uh, they do but uh, still india i think uh, um, sure. we we have very less uh, uh places where we can really accommodate these children actually i would like to add a point sir now as we are including absurd sir also knows we are including autism in sadarab certification also so basically they can attend exams now they can pass 10th and if they have passed 10th vocational training only given when they have a 10th certificate basically so yeah. so they are now covered under sadarab certificate so they get pension and all the benefits in exams extra time ignoring spelling mistakes scribe and all those things and the pass percentage has come down to only i think 20% or 30% or for other people it is around 35% for these are 10 or 20% is around there sir once it is comes into work probably this the more uh, the child can be more socialized or can be kept in more uh, society wise they can be more better uh, ch chances for them to survive and they also have 1% reservation in government jobs for all these kids there has a recent oh. job which has come up yes sir oh, that is that is a good thing actually Yes, sir. So the good if part is properly. So if implemented is, well, then it works, sir. If it is implemented, <laughs> no, that is very easy to manipulate. Actually, so yes, yeah, yeah, yes, we have, yes, uh, we are seeing it with SLD. Yes, sir, certification they come, sir, on and off they come daily. <laughs> we are having these issues. Yes, Now, one special educator yes, asks uh, uh, Rishi, like, uh, what are the quick ways and long term goals to stop laughing in ASD children? why do you, i don't think i don't usually focus on things which are uh, not necessary for autism kids laughing is not a thing where inappropriate laughing inappropriate gesturing inappropriate response will be there in autism kids which is usually if suddenly there are outbursts of laugh which is causing trouble to the child or is becoming cranky or if it is there then probably uh, i'll handle it otherwise laughing will not be much a problem for me i'll be usually focusing on more of uh, communication improvement and is daily strength improvement rather than focusing on small small things which usually present in normal kids also but it is rich with little regularly which is commonly seen not is unexplained law of an excel self talking will be there this will be there when the child is left alone but if the child is kept in therapy is kept engaged this will not be there in most of the times but but rishi if the if the a person is asking the question if it is inappropriate or if it is hampering is uh, is our her daily living uh this, i think the role of antipsychotics are definitely there medications will work sir but uh, uh, age wise we have to assess focus on why he is doing basically why he is doing is very important for from my point of view sir what is the reason sudden outburst of love can be provoked or unprovoked unprovoked probably medication provoked probably we can modify the environment sensory sensory issues also have to be yes, sensory sensory issues. uh and uh, i think i think, any, I think can, can i say about this one i sir. think the parents need to understand and they have to make some accommodations the child may be laughing maybe just like that maybe some internal stimulus any sensory issue and they should not go for medication okay they probably should ignore and that may bring down the kind of repetitive behavior if it is uh, but if they uh -huh. give attention that may become more Not. so to go for medication for this kind of issues uh, uh, i don't think really it is that necessary you know whenever behavior is non harmful i'd ask them to ignore the behavior yeah. sir most of the times yeah, that's right yeah. uh 
some questions are again on the diet. I'm skipping few questions that are on the diet again. Uh, Sambiridi asks, like, oh, uh, can you give me some suggestions for mood swings? Every 15 days, he changes to either hyper or calm. That that fluctuation will be definitely noted in autism kids. And the fluctuation, if you time, uh, I usually ask the parents to maintain a diary. What are you giving on that day? What weight are you taking? What are the activities are done at home? Who are there at home? They traveled a place. Any medication given, extra medication given. I usually ask them to maintain a diary. So if you maintain, ask the parents to maintain diary. See, I have seen fluctuations like if you change place from one place to other, if change of therapist, fever, antibiotic medications, uh, any uh, problem, any uh, show, uh, angry issues and family conflicts in the family will regress the child, definitely. So any small, simple thing, we don't know what can be. So we have to maintain a diary, what is causing that regression and address that issue. Then only the hyperactivity will, will improve and he'll be better. So the fluctuations will be noted. And you have to see the fluctuations are improving or not. If, the, if it happens every 15 days and gradually it is happening every one month, then definitely there is some improvement. So it should not be uh, worried. You have to focus what exactly is causing that. Again, the environment plays a major role in that. Yeah. Thank you, Rishi. Like uh, uh, one attendee, HG, asks, uh, food should be avoided with autism. Does gluten play a role? Already answered. Dr. Sai Kumar uh, asks about prevention strategies for autism. That was already answered. Now, Cherishma Kandula, uh, is there any incidence of autism post-pandemic? I have seen children born during the pandemic who come to hospital with speech delay and low social inter interaction. So, post-pandemic, the cases have increased. We can't directly relate to the COVID pandemic because if it is the reason COVID pandemic, then every child in post-pandemic should be having autism. There are some other factors which can be influencing that. It may be one of the aggravating factor for less socialization. The problem here is most of the parents come to me and say that my child was in a pandemic. That's why he could not develop speech. I say, I ask the same question. The child was with you 24 hours, 24 by 7. Why don't he talk with you? Why doesn't he talk with you? So there is social difficulties. Okay, I understand because he did not go outside. But why is he not talking with you when you are around? So basically it is not one thing. As the child is at home, the observation of part, part, part of the parents has increased. They are observing kids closely 24 by 7. Probably they are picking up more. And that may aggravate rather than directly causing the illness. G. Yeah. Uh, Ushasri asks, lack of mother milk can be a cause for a delayed milestone and possibly misinterpretation in assessment. How to avoid mistakes in assessment? Avoid mistakes. You have to learn the scales properly. Then we can avoid mistakes. That one thing we can we do. We have to be sure about uh, how to do a scale and approach a scale. And mother milk, but definitely as I follow CFGF diet, I don't advise bottle mortal milk at all. Top milk definitely de destroy the protective bacteria, microbiota, which is present. And they are highly caloric food, which is not equivalent to mother's milk. So definitely there is some issue with the milk pictures. And most of the kids I see, and recently we presented paper along with... Uh, uh, one of the junior in uh, Varangal Psychiatry where we thought uh, 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 taking different factors into consideration, one of the factors is bottle feeding. And Keshara sir rightly pointed out then that we should have a control sample. Now we are taking control sample also so that we can establish that causes directly causing probably increase of autism. So once we do that, then probably we'll know. But definitely bottle mill not only will have effects on uh, uh, autism, they'll have much more larger uh, uh, so, uh, physical and uh, mental effects because I'm being a pediatrician, I don't advise bottle feeding at all. Can you uh, throw a bit more information about uh, fragile X and other kinds of autism spectrum disorders? Jeev uh, Shastri asks again. So, so these syndromic children are more prone. They are higher risk. Double the risk of what uh, regular children are there. Once you find syndromic children, there may be associated autism, ADHD, intellectual disability. This will help you to understand the prognosis rather than and understand the treatment point of view. There will be a lot of uh, comorbid condition in these cases. Uh, in, if you take tuberous sclerosis, there will be mental retardation, intellectual disability, along with seizures. So whenever there is seizure, the, the child will be deteriorating. And already, already there is intellectual disability along with autism. It will have a lot of trouble in uh, treating the therapies. The syndromic children most of the times have poorer prognosis. And uh, repeated seizures and intellectual disability is one thing which is usually... Comorbidly exists with angel lens, fragile X, and as well as tuberous sclerosis. All these things will definitely have poor prognosis. And next time when you plan a child, the prevalence and what uh, assessing gene, uh, genetic uh, counseling for the parents is very helpful for the next child. 
Yeah, now that uh, no psychobiotics, everyone is talking about any role of psychobiotics in ASD. Yeah, uh, recently they are they are all called probiotics only because mm. they are using as pro, uh, for psychiatric medication, especially called lactobacillus rhamnosus, lacto lacto brain brain biome are these some probiotics which are used in autism for supplementing good bacteria, which usually affects gut brain axis. So they are using it as for brain. That's why they are called psychobiotics. They don't understand that there are probiotics for respiratory system. There are probiotics for urethral system. There are probiotic for uterine system. So every probiotic is now coming up. And there is more more focus on probiotics these days rather than all these things giving direct medications. So they are calling psychobiotics because uh, they are prebiotics, probiotics used for gut brain axis. So they have little role. And uh, regarding the gut micro microbiota transplantation. Is it, yeah. uh, it is being practiced uh, yes, it is yes. being practiced anywhere in India. Yeah, yes, it is That's there. The yes. Fecal transplantation is done in few few places in Mumbai. I have seen some cases doing fecal transplantation, picking up uh, uh, fecal and transplanting into that. But as we say that, as we say, these autism kids already have leaky gut syndrome. So there is problem which is continuously existing. If you replace fecus and uh, replace that bacteria for a particular time, that will be there, helpful for a particular period only. After that, again, they have leaky syndrome. Again, they'll go for the same problem. So once your fecal transplantation is there, then you have to maintain therapies continuously. You have to maintain uh, 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 bio, uh, diet properly. Then only probably it will help. But directly, it won't help. For continuous improvement, it will not help. Any uh, that uh, stem cell transplantation, already they have banned neurogen. Already IPS previously certified around four or five years back that there is no role of stem cell tra transplantation. Luckily, I'm very happy that around six months back, it has been banned. I'm very, very happy that because that is a common question which I get. Fecal transplantation and Beamer therapies are these questions. They have temporary improvement, but not continuous. Uh, is a child detected with autism, can, can they pursue MBBS? That <laughs> <laughs> um, high-functioning autism is there, definitely they'll have uh, chances of pursuing. Rather than MBBS, they can become anything much better than us. Basically, if there is high-functioning autism, They'll be very yeah. brilliant. I think we have some of uh, them in, in our own groups also. Uh, it's, it's not at all surprising. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that's a good point. Like, you know, they can become anything. Yes. They can be, they, they, yeah, they definitely, can, sir. If you're uh, given, if you're given see, the a main, chance. The, see, the yeah. main problem, main thing is in India, autism has become a byword for previously mental retardation or yes. no intellectual. Today, yes. actually, I have read in a Telugu paper, autism in the brackets, he has written buddhi <laughs> So, so, this, so what are we talking about? So, actually, we have to talk yes. at, uh, men, uh, uh, global developmental delay, one, two, autism plus uh, intellectual ID yes. plus pure autism. So, that way, things will be clear. Yes. Uh, otherwise, so the psychologists mostly are pushing uh, everything under autism so that it is more acceptable to parents uh, undermining the actual problem actually so it is something uh, political thing yeah. uh, thank you sir uh, dr pavan sir dr rishikesh i think uh, we have crossed two hours and i think it's a record yeah uh, i, I request dr thank ram subaridi sir chairperson uh, if there are questions uh, dr rishikesh please uh, uh, can you announce your number so that uh, all the participants, those who, who yes, wish sorry, to communicate no, no. with you further, uh, <laughs> can you announce your mobile number, please? Sir, I'll just type in the chat box so they can see that number. Yes, yes, please. Because I think uh, uh, they can be in touch with you and you can do a lot of liaison work with them. I think we have a lot of, uh, many are from the uh, special education background. There are speech therapists, there are occupational therapists, there are... Uh, and vocational therapy, clinical psychologists. Yeah, I've, there are three, four clinical psychologists, and it's nice that the group. Uh, it was. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a mixed group. Okay, I think uh, uh, multi-dimensional approach. I think uh, your your session is again interesting to all, uh, yes. sir, uh, Doctor Ramsubaridi, sir. Uh, uh, please, sir, can you uh, your last word, sir? All the participants enjoyed the mean interaction and um, presentation. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you, sir. And I, I thank George Reddy, sir, Pavan, sir, and uh, Mina, sir, Narayan Rao, sir, uh, Sai Krishna, Vishal, Vishalakla, sir, and not mentioning about Ramsubha Reddy, sir. He's 
he is the pillar of support from uh, for nilofer and uma shankar sir who is always behind me and encouraging me for and give me a chance to opportunity to work in nilofer i thank everyone from ipst has been telangana state bridge thank you very much wonderful session uh, dr rishikesh i think uh, we need to have uh, series 2 or series 3 it should continue i feel and i'm sure you'll also upgrade Elite. your uh, sure, uh, uh, teaching uh, you know might be more papers you can bring so that may, i think many ask some good uh, questions sir with sir with, uh, sir. Sir, with your permission sir there's one uh, priyanka rao uh, who has raised her hand can i allow her to talk sir yes yes please please sir a very good evening sir to all of you it's a privilege to attend the webinar and uh, rishikesh sir it's an excellent presentation i myself uh, coming from rehabilitation uh, field and you have given literally an excellent presentation and uh, one question to you is uh, what is the biggest challenge from parents uh, you know that you have faced so far and how did you deal with it so every child is a challenge to me ma'am every child is a new case to me because the presentation is very different and especially parents who are very literate are big trouble for me ma'am i'm difficult to handle the parents who are having uh, who are usually use google and uh, they listen to so many they don't practice one technique they usually go for multiple centers multiple therapies and they don't understand that that over stimulation is also a problem in autism so streamlining the therapy and number of sessions Uh, addressing is very important and uh, they google and they go uh, they think that number of therapies will improve the child rather than uh, so in in as per exact rule three weeks of autism three weeks of ot two days of bt one day of speech therapy is enough usually for autism that's what is usually prescribed uh, for other western countries but in our in our society there is they think that parent goes every day for therapies we usually not comfortable with that and most common challenge if the patient is not improving few times and comorbid conditions are there that will be difficult point uh, to handle ma'am and explaining the parents for diagnosis itself is a challenging thing for me because i have to sometimes i take two to two and a half hours to explain them i have to go for core concepts and tell them what exactly is the problem until then also they may not understand what exactly the problem is they they keep on denying i have seen patients i have seen two years back i told them the child is autistic now they come back and say that you are right sir the child is having autism now we want to get treatment two years have been wasted by the time so there are every chi- every child is little challenging for me i think there is no something called uh, every child is little challenging for from my point of point of view is every child is very important every child is unique and we have to treat them uniquely thank you rushi sir president sir please take president sir one minute jaj it is 10 o'clock but a very important thing the i think we need to do something from our ips tsb george is the best person to do that and once actually i spoke to mrs sachavati rathod the present minister for child and women welfare she said dr sahab she is from our area she said if there is anything we can do you please tell me and actually i didn't follow it up george i think we need to do something after with rishi help and we, we, we do something and and we can approach her to put some centers especially centers for these children because i have seen really parents suffering particularly middle class and poorer people yeah. yes sir yes sir the therapies are very costly sir huh? yeah very therapies costly therapies are very costly very costly and there's at least schools some kind of schools where centers i think the government can do now government has a lot of money the only thing is we, we are, and uh, and i i know the minister personally so we can go and Jaj is the best one to do the, all the paperwork, and you are there to support from whatever things need to be done. Yes. Okay. Right. Because uh, yeah, thank so you. Jaj sir probably accidentally uh, exited. Left. Yes, yeah, accidentally. Yeah. Exited. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow right. we will listen on the YouTube. Yes, sir. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> sir, uh, now I request uh, Narendra Rao sir, uh, our treasurer of IPS Telangana State Bank, to propose the vote of thanks, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. I thank and congratulate Dr. Rishikesh for his excellent presentation, and I think it is the longest session we had uh, as a webinar. Many questions answered. I thank each and every one, Dr. Ram Subbare, Dr. Dr. Kesha Rao Sir, Uma Shankar Sir, and Gauri Devi Madam for their inputs. I thank IPS TSB President Dr. Jad Sir, Dr. Minhas Sir, Dr. Pawan for. Uh, uh, 
creating this opportunity for so many people to refresh their knowledge. I thank everyone who attended this session. Thank you. And thank uh, you. we also thank, uh, one second, George Reddy sir has joined, sir. I'll just uh, upgrade him to. Yeah, we thank Dr. Icon Life Sciences and Anil Martin for providing sir, services. Sir. George, sir. Uh, yeah, Pawan. Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh, sorry, uh, I just missed the last words. Uh, sir, uh, uh, yeah, Richie, I think uh, you have done a wonderful job. Thank you. Sir. Uh, and uh, I, I thank all the participants. I think there is still 70. I see the number. Uh, I hope we will uh, continue the same spirit of uh, uh, attending these uh, kind of uh, uh, webinars. Uh, very soon, we'll come with another uh, program. And uh, I thank uh, uh, Dr. Keshwaro, sir, Dr. Mashinkar, sir, Dr. Ram Subaridi, sir. And Dr. Minas Bhai, I think he was there. He's on his in, he's in journey, I think. We couldn't get connected to him. Uh, thank you, uh, Pavan, uh, yes, for sir. organizing this program in a short notice. Yes, and uh, definitely thanks to uh, Anil, Anil Martin uh, for organizing without any hiccups. Thank you, sir. Icon. Yes, sir. Thank you, I. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Will. Rishi, sir, we can't find your number, sir. It Sorry is posted in the chat box. Chat box, ma'am. It is posted in the chat box. Good night, sir. Ma'am, you should type my name, you'll get the number, ma'am. It's, it's available online. <laughs> Rishikesh Giri Prasad. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Thank Good you, Rishi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Wonderful you, sir. having you.